but it will be. And but the, the diffuse has dropped. Dennis has picked it up. There's no diffuse coming in just yet. Chris J, last person. There's the kit. Can he get the diffuse? Though he should just about have time for it. We see the shouts from Mouse Sports already. And there it is. They will just about take that over the line. Okay, Sean Guess is gonna be happy, man. A long time ago, he was talking about having, you know, dropping Kevlar's to have, you know, more grenade people on your T side. And uh, wait, what? What is this? <laughs> Potatoes and banana for breakfast. Mouse Sports had a big war cry at the beginning of the match. What the first part of it was Mouse Sports something something, and the last part of it, and I quote, was. So we'll see if that's given them the energy, along with those potatoes and bananas that Chris J has had for breakfast. Full, almost full to PC50 Eco, apart from Demos on Tech 9 from Team Spirit. I think this shows uh, some, out, uh, some amount of respect here to Mouse Wars because, you know, if they did have a set piece to run with the off of the bomb plant, they could, but, uh, you know, just going to go for the AKs in the next round. A lot of UMPs here for Mouse Wars, so want to play for those mid ranges. Ah. Low with the three, 3k there, that's actually pretty good against five pistols running you down. So, there you go, another kill from Nico at range. And to be fair as well, you kind of, low in lowest position, he does want to rebuy as well, so dying here is fine. You want to rebuy into an M4, because you know the AKs are coming. They've got a Famas, they've got two UMPs, they've got a Scout. It's always very dangerous to find yourself at such a heavy disadvantage on the long ranges, especially on a map like Dust2. Just so you know, guys, Mouse Sports are the closest team to us in the building at the moment. So if you hear some screaming and banging on the table, that's likely to be Mouse Sports or Chris J, who's the closest yeah. person Basically Chris to J. us. He, he was banging the table during the other match. When he, he was, was drumming was on his mouse pad. Team Spirit on the buy. Five AKs coming out. The uh, smokes and the flashbangs on the side. Going for a five-man long push. And it will be successful as Mouse Sports have backed that ass up. They've got the UMPs and the scout for this round. Not going to upgrade all the weapons just yet. Gonna manage their economy as best they can. Spirit, they've got control of long. What will they do with their players now? The thing is, is that I feel like Spirit are fairly committed to just to going for A here because they've only got two grenades. They've got a smoke and a flashback. So with all the players already in the given positions, you don't really have the ability to go anywhere else because you need to have pop flashes for other positions. You need to be able to smoke your smoke Xbox if you want to try to retake catwalk. You know, there's all these you know, smokes and flashes you need. So they're already in long. So they have to go for the smoke on the crossover and then push the A-bomb site. That is what they're going to do as well. Smoke has been deployed and beautifully done. Nice entry frag from Sopvik. Nice. Perfect smoke as well, actually. And we'll see Team Spirit taking the A-bomb site. I, I'm struggling to see Mouse Wars retaking this, to be honest, against AKs. But look how much Mouse Sports delayed with that Molotov. That allows the CTs to get much closer, but indeed, the weaponry is inadequate, to say the least. And before you get to the man disadvantage, you must got to be careful with those peaks because that scout's holding an angle. That smoke will help Mouse Sports. They could go for a boost as well. They could go for a boost, but oh, there's Dennis, gone. And maybe he was supposed to be boosted by Spitty, who takes Certus down. Can he win a duel with Dima? He can, leaving uh, Kibakan alone. He's got three players to defend the bomb from. But he can't do it. Chris J with a pistol. The bomb's not planted for him either. Two players surviving, surviving for Mouse Sports, and they get those upgrades for free. Wow. And that shows you again how good Mouse Sports are on the dust. Oh, look, it's us, James. It's us and Chris J. It's us. Chris J over there. So you can see if you hear him shouting, he's right over there. But it does show it does go to show like how how efficient Mouse Sports can be on, on every situation when it comes to Dust 2. Because there we saw a great smoke on the retake, which was a little bit forward. It, it kind of created it, it offset the crossfire as if you're a CT coming from the elevator position into the ramp and into long. It, the, it offset the crossfire and basically eliminated it completely. And so the player there, I think it's Spitty, could take two one-on-ones instead of walking to a crossfire. And that, that was like one of the many moves that allowed Mars Sports to retake that. So just it just shows you the level of understanding they have on this map. And we'll see even more of that on the T side. But for now, it's all about Spirit trying to break this Mars Sports economy because it's going to really start rolling in because they, they, they've been taking economic gambles playing it economically sound and saying we're going to have worse weapons so that we can have more money and they, they've actually been winning the rounds. I do wonder if, if Mouse Sports are playing some of these things as an experiment against a team that they feel they're guaranteed to beat. Like that pistol round, for example. Very interesting stuff from, from Mouse Sports there. Bearing in mind, they only won it with uh, one player alive, so came pretty close. Anyway, there's a push 
from Spirit towards the short position. Let's see what Nico can do from uh, that angle. Not much without a boost as the players go past, and the bubble get planted for free. Dima going down, running around the site, looking for anyone in close quarters. No one there. Nico getting a frag from that boost position, and now the cleanup begins for the rest of the mass sports side. Very brief round post plant there for Spirit, but they did what they set out to do, which is plant the bomb. No bonus uh, in terms of kills, though. I think, though, this is very much a matchup. And, and again, this is always going to be the factor, a, a big factor. If, you're, if you feel like you're playing a massive underdog, somebody, a team that you think on paper is much worse than you, they're, they're, uh, you should often just let them plant because you, you should be in a spot where your buy round play is going to be so crushing still against their buy rounds that you don't really care about, about pressuring their economy. It's more about allowing your economy to just be amazing so that you can always have buy rounds because that's just going to give you the best percentages um, across the across the entirety of the match matchup. So I really like that we saw that from our sports. They gave it up. They got the kills. They lost zero players. And they're going going into this round. They all have 5K dollars at least, apart from Lowell's, who's on 4K. And Team Spirit are going to come in with a big buy. But what do they do with it? We see, of course, a technical pause at the moment, which will give Spirit a little bit of opportunity perhaps to discuss that. Yeah, the cord was caught in the chair, the wheel of his chair. Ooh. He has been untangled. The entanglement has uh, has concluded, so we should be back into things. Team Spirit with 5k plus on their players. The buy will be coming out very shortly indeed. Can they get their first round on the board? Can they kill Chris J? He's currently 6 for 0 with 1 assist. On the other side of things, Davkos with the AWP for the T side is 0, 0 and 4. But he's got an AWP. He did well with the AWP yesterday, although on against Mouse Boss on Dust 2, he has one of his toughest tests. Yeah, you have to take down Chris J <laughs> or deal with Chris J. At, at points, he is he can be the best AWPer in the world on this map at points. So that is definitely never going to be fun. We've always seen his best performances on this map. Dima looking to go for perhaps an entry there in double doors. Very common that you want to remove a CT who's close behind the doors. And, you know, I think the pop flash was a bit too short. I think that's why he didn't go all the way in. Chris J flashed off the angle, staying on the angle, though. Ah. Repeat comes in, shows you his confidence as his teammate goes for the reflash, which is Nico. But Chris J does go down. That is a nice, nice. start here in the round for Team Spirits. Nice. Chris J's down. Problems continue, though, for Spirit because Nico is on the A site. Nico being alive is always a problem as is Chris J, as is playing mouse boss on Dust2. Lowell is towards Long, he's on his lone, lonesome for the time being. He's got no one to flash for him with Chris J going down. Often you'll find the AWPer going between Long and uh, the A site, flashing for each teammate, for Nico and Lowell, in uh, this scenario. So he's going to be up against three players, Dima charging in first. Lowell around the corner, gets the one versus one, the second one comes in for Kebacon, does good damage, but Long has been taken by Spirit. Yeah, a scary split here, but Nico sitting on the bomb site. He is alone, and he's got to get these frags fast. The guy on short delays him long enough. He's going to have to look in two angles at the same time. And that is very troublesome. Oh, but Nico's fast! And he's going to find him sec himself and second one on the spray down. So, well, what are you going to say? <laughs> what are you going to do? Nico comes in, and Dennis will finish off Quebec. And That's the problem. You kill Chris J. He's still got Nico to deal with. And he is quite the issue to face for Team Spirit. Zero to six, zero to five, excuse me. And uh, the team, they should be good for another buy with AKs. No AWP for Dab Boss, although he's now zero, zero for five. And he'll be picking up the scouts in this round. So we'll see if he can have any success with the lesser of the two sniper rifles. Oh man, he hit that shot. He actually hit Dab Boss. So did that. Chris J. Oh yeah they, both, yeah, they both did, yeah. They both tagged each other. If only that cost had a WP. 1 minute 35, Team Spirit with their initial map control. Again, you see a, a different uh, position on that pillar. More forward than you saw from Hayes earlier, but that eliminates the blind spot that Hayes had issues with. But of course, it has its own risk. You're more exposed. It works both ways. So that just did a lot of damage there to Dennis, actually. That's going to disincentivize mouse balls heavily in any pressure on to beat tunnels. Ooh, Dink comes in from Spitty. Dive cost is low. 
Actually, not the, ah. not the Dink on Davkos, but Demon will receive one. Nico, oh, he's going close up mid. He wants to find the finishing shot. Oh, Sliver just disappearing around the corner, but Nico finds Certis, takes down Davkos as well. In comes ah. Kibakin. Critical damage done to Kibakin as Nico falls, but he's done enough. And Lowell is going to hear the running. He gives the info to his teammates. The A bombsite is abandoned, though. Will it be enough, though? That's a question because Dennis and Chris J are very heavily tagged at the moment. Chris J, though, still has control of the long area. If he can get himself to pit or platform, that would be far superior. And indeed, he's going over towards the platform at the moment, which limits the positions that Spirit can take. If they peek to see what's going on along, then it may be the death of them. In the meantime, the other two mouse sports players are in a short position. Chris J. Trying to force the issue. Oh, he's got to be careful. He gave off his angle to throw the Molotov, and that cost him. Dennis taking Softic down in the meantime. Dennis down to Kibaken on his own versus two. Both coming in from the same angle. Will he expect second one? No. There he is, Lowell, last man standing now. He's full health at the moment. Kibaken going for the reload. That gives him the time for the Molotov to come out. Lowell forces Kibaken from his position and takes him down. Not sure if he'll, have, if he'll, be, able to risk, if he'll be able to rescue the AWP. Well... It is miles away, so no, but indeed, this was a great play from Nico, showing why such a value to Mouse Sports. So the 6 0, the big 6 0 now for Mouse Sports, which would explain the current timeout situation. Team Spirit have called one and they discuss away. You can see. Perhaps, actually, no. Well, okay, it's a little bit of discussion. There's a the odd word being said. Your word being said by Team Spirit. They, they need to keep that spirit alive, Dan. That's what they need to do. Well, there you go. It's, it's the timeouts gone. The match has been resumed. And it's going to be very tough now for Team Spirit to get back into this one, I think, because Mousebots are starting to, to roll in. They're starting to hit their shots. Saw some good stuff from Chris J and Nico already. It's not a good sign. Oh, the short push, the fast short push was waiting for this one. We've got Chris J up there with some rifle support. Nico with a jumping AK. Pulls off a headshot onto Kabakin. And now it's a trade actually. Dima in there. So that's that's good actually. That works out really well for Team Spirit. Will this cause some aggression from the CT side? Chris J around the middle doors at the moment with the alternative ah. angle. Maybe saw Davkos leg first, but Davkos finally getting some kills with the AWP. Again, a stiff test versus the mouse sports side. Dennis picks the AWP up. Two players towards A, but Lowell's just holding down the long area for the time being, giving mouse sports an avenue for a potential retake should Spirit focus on that, but they're moving towards B. Just Spitty there, what can he do for mouse sports? Or season A comes in, he still gets a kill out of it though. And that does keep the retake chance alive, but the rotation is a long one. Mouse sports have a lot of money. But that doesn't always mean that you're going to go for the retake. It really depends on how you think your chances are going to be. You don't want to throw away guns for like a 10% chance to win the round, for example. But so instead, I think what we're seeing from Mouseworks is just contain. Do the economic damage, and therein will be your risk. And that is a risk you can control. Oh, very fast from Dima. Dennis, don't often see him with the AWP. <laughs> Not quite as fast as Chris J, and that AWP will be lost. Nothing taken into the next round for Mouse Sports. Team Spirit, get around on the boards. There's, uh, for the most part, money for a good buy. Spitty's a bit short. That was gross. But uh, Team Spirit in a good spot now to to take all the money away from the Mouse Sports side and perhaps catch up on the rounds. Maybe easier said than done, however. I wonder if that was like a... Uh, I think I think that happens to Shock sometimes, like his mouse bugged out or something like that, for him to jump there. Oh, mouse wheel jump, yeah. Because, or, or, or he just hit the mouse wheel or something by accident. But uh, less of that and more of the long take. Spirit with a fast one. Oh, Nico's on the other side, though. He could be pushing through, but instantly taken down through the smoke, I think, or the wall, or through his teammate. I don't know, he's through something. Through it all, Dan. Through it all. And now it's the three versus five. Fast rotation for Mouse Sports, but they have to boost Elevator to get somebody onto the site if they want to get somebody up there. Very tough situation. Chris J. Oh, Davkost is surely looking for this one. Nice flash. Da that pulls Davkost off the angle. Licks allows uh, Chris J to take it instead. Will Davkost have the patience to sit there, though? Oh, it looks like Chris J won't have the patience to hold it. They're starting to suspect after the delay that Spirit might be going elsewhere. 
but that is not the case. They can hear each other from these positions if they start running. If they if they're behind blue, they can hear CTs on short shorts if short players running, but and vice versa. So there's information to be gained by both sides, and that may uh, play a part in what they choose to do. Big grenade coming into Dennis. Ramp flashbang coming in from his teammate, but he's not in a position to peek. Spinny goes down. There goes Dennis as well, and Chris J soon dispatched off four kills for Dima in that round. Very nice stuff. Maybe some variants through the smoke, which pretty much crushed the round for Mouse Sports in the first place. Oh, it was. I think through a uh, teammate, yeah. God I don't know. It's, oh yeah, yeah, for a mass teammate, yeah. God damn. They lined up. They had the wrong angles. They didn't know Dima was there already. Dima putting in big frags in this round, and indeed, he's broken the economy of mass sports. So time for a full save from mass sports. Thank you, thank you, mass sports. Full, fullest of the saves. They do have. Around $1,900 on four of the five players. Dennis with 3.5. So after losing this round, which is the second in a row, that will give them a loss bonus of $2,400, which in addition to what they have is a decent chunk of change, allowing them to buy the love or around 4,300 at the very least. Not the best ever, but let's see if they can get a kill here. Maybe still a weapon away. All on and up. Oh man, Kabakin only gets himself one onto Dennis, but he does do some good damage, but the AK is collected so that onto Nico too, and he's so fast. His first bullet accuracy is so good. He might even get another frag out of this, or even steal away the AK entirely into the next round, which would allow perhaps an AWP purchase, maybe. Team Spirit reacting fast to the proceedings. Bombs planted. So we'll see if Mouse Sports go for the containment again. It would be a Lemming play to run at the A site considering what they have. Nico looking ready to deploy a flashbang though, so they have utility. Not so lemming after all. There's a grenade from the CT side. That's a little bit of smoke from the T's. That may put a stop to these shenanigans. So I think it's just a one AK from Nico taken into the next round. And indeed, Team Spirit continue to catch up. Lowell creeping through the smoke though. Looking to catch something or pick something off. Honestly, love this round from Mouseports. I mean, they showed that they had they had a plan. So we are gonna we are gonna try to catch a player. Like, if there's no long rush, there might be one guy who's isolated. If there is to be anyone outside of the, the long house that we can use the numbers against, sacrifice two or three, maybe more players to pick up the AK. Maybe secure that AK away, or force them to try to kill us with the AK, allowing us more fragging opportunities, or just allowing us to have the AK next round, which gives us more nades. So we can see here that the buy is going to be looking pretty good because of the the AK pickup uh, as well. It's going to help quite a bit. So lovely round from Mouse Sports with the full save. And now another long take from T-Spirit. They seem to be loving these long takes. Fast flashes into the corner as well. Softic just charging through, but he's facing a crossfire. And his teammates are going to be hard pressed to help. Early pick up for Mouse Sports. Nico using the smoke to widen his range, so to speak. Just about surviving in that Molotov. And I had maybe questions for Team Spirit there. They've still got Dima in the ramp position. The bomb's still in long as well. In the meantime, Team Spirit, two players close to the uh, middle doors. But where will they head? Moving into the upper, uh, upper dark area. Mouseballs do have Dennis and Spiddy there, as they always tend to do. Will Spirit just commit to just pushing into B? They do have the ability to throw a forward smoke. Molotov as well for the back boxes if it is truly required, but Davkos Sorp is perhaps a bit better for that. Flashbang in, somewhat worrying. Oh, perfect timing on the smoke. Team Spirit now, that's, that's put them in a bit of an awkward spot. Do they wait or do they go? Because if they wait, the smoke out, they're going to have something in the region of, well, never mind. They're not going to wait. Flash through into the crossfire. Crossfires are good. Two frags to Spitty. Could have got more out, that, out of that. Still a chance here for Spirit. See if there's a push through the smoke when a bomb gets planted. Lowell not going for it. Going to play the numbers game instead. Molotov on the high ground. They've got one more Molotov to deploy as well. So it's going to be hard for Lowell to get into this game in the short term. However, ah. they can't really afford to have Molotov's out the T side. Score evened up now. We've got Kibacon on the high ground, but who's covering the door? Nobody! Two stereo frags coming from Mouseports, and they are back to winning ways. It's been a long journey to get there. Three in a row for Team Spirit. It's pretty good. I mean, they were up against a 6-0 for a while, 
And now they're able to call one back on Mouse Sports. And in that effort of the 3-0, Mouse Sports, uh, they did do some damage here or there, but Team Spirit actually have some money to actually go for a, a big buy here. So they, they've done well in the, from that perspective. So for Mouse Sports, they're still up against really strong opposition. Davkos looking for, to go for the cover. He's quite a fast deal opera as well, but won't find anything on the end on the gap shots this time. I don't think we've seen a gap shot today so far. We've seen two no. dust two in the two dust twos we've seen. I don't think I've seen a single player tagged through the door as if auto passed. sniper. But that was it. Low all alone towards long. Chris J in his usual position. He likes to start with an off angle on the short area. Then he moves into a tighter one as time continues. So we should see that coming in soon. No one in a position to flash for the team. They're going to just raw peak Chris J. That is suicide. Why have you bought flashes if you're not going to flash Chris J? If you want to flash anybody on this map, it's Chris J. It's a good flash question. Miko. It's a good question. And what do you, what do you, what do you gain from that? Like you jump past, you can't shoot, you can't shoot him while you're flying in the air. So flash and peek, and then you can shoot him. I will stop interrupting you now. <laughs> now they're in a spot where they just have to go as for somewhere, and they have so many grenades that they can do anything they want, any kind of set piece, any just any just anything in general. Ooh, that double smoke there. That does show a lack of communication. From the Team Spirit side, can they make it work here? Pushing forwards, Dennis finds one, Chris J on the flank. Free rain on Catwalk there, of course. As it's falling to pieces, that was just, that just devolved into some, well, that was not optimal Counter-Strike in that round from Team Spirit. Let's put it that way. It's, look at this, look. Okay, so he's trying to be the bait for the trade with his teammate, but his teammate doesn't, can't even get around the corner fast enough for for that trade or even to fire a shot at Chris J from what I could see there. You gotta flash him man. You gotta take him out of the game, you gotta blind him. Chris J will deliver in that position if you give him the opportunity. Yeah, I mean it's it, it, it's the classic spot where you're not supposed to be untradeable. You're supposed to watch a pixel fire and fall off. That's like the most of the time it's supposed to be untradeable. That's that's why it's such a good position. That's why you have to flash it, so it is a bit nuts, yeah. Oh, Dima. Dropping Nico there. Trade comes in from Dennis. He does take some damage, though, which will force Mouse Sports into a 2 2 setup. Now, Spirit, they should hit A really in, in this situation, most in, in the majority of, of, uh, of times, just because there's two guys on the B bomb site. We can see Lowell and Chris J for, on the A are very spread out. So you can usually guarantee you're up against one player. Look at this. He's pushing short with the AWP on his own. Oh, that is such a marginal play there. Not going to work out for Chris J, but can his team recover from this? Nico and Chris J down. The rest of the team aren't in position to hold down the A side. Again, you've just got Lowell biding his time towards long. Spitty will get a pick towards the middle area. So that will suggest a fast flank, but he might wait for his teammate Dennis. Spirit with a plant for short, but they've got nobody on short. They've got no control of shorts or long. There's a smoke down, so maybe Kebekan can use this to have some short presence and make this a harder retake for mouse sports. Another fun spot to be in for mouse sports. Push is coming though. Spitty's charging up the long area. And that's pull players away. And I'm for the flank there, but Kebekan comes across though very quickly. And Lowell is alone. We'll get himself out of dodge. Team Spirit with a, a nice round. Again, Dima with a very savage entry and some good damage in mid to kick things off. I do, I love that Chris J went for that play, to be honest, because it's just, he's he's one of the players that can pull that stuff off. Like If you have a player that can pull that stuff off, then it's, it's great to see. If he gets a pick there, he then gets the opportunity to then reassess the situation and say, okay, I want to continue my aggression or I've got the information, I can fall back now into a new position. And you know, he, you give him that, uh, you should always give him those spots. So even though at this time it didn't work out, it's uh, not good to be outcome oriented. I think uh, I think you want Chris J going for that play every time. Team Spirit have planted a bomb a lot of times in this half so far. They're, Mouse Sports have won four rounds, five rounds by Diffuse. They just, they've, ha they've had two detonations as well. 
and who knows if the other two uh, elimination rounds they won, they planted a bomb. So Team Spirit are getting, they're getting a lot of success. They're getting onto bomb sites. They're getting the bomb planted. Currently four rounds behind Mouse Sports with three rounds remaining in this half. See some discussion from the CT side as what they want to do in the coming rounds. Chris J on the scout rather than the AWP. But uh, he's famous for the scout and famous for the scout on Dust2 to boot. Somewhat notorious, maybe. Although it's been a while since those highlight reels. So we'll see if he can make a new one today. Davkos still on the AWP. Hasn't been uh, racking up the frags just yet, but uh, I would say he's warmed up at this point. For a horrible start. Two players towards B for the mouse sports side. Normal stuff. Lowell is, I think, on the short position. He's playing an off angle himself. And uh, there seems to be some aggression here from our sports. Yeah, they like their catwalk aggression. Mouse sports they have all these cut, all set up, all manner of setups for that. Chris Shea on the same position with a scout, as we tend to see him. And Nico is there to basically kill everyone. Once the distraction comes in, Nico comes out, but not quite good enough there. But the UMP is hard to ask for deliverance from that. But Lowell does get a good chunk of damage in. The nade does what? colossal damage there. And Davkos is lucky to be alive. Still a man advantage here for Team Spirit, but for how long? Another great frag from Lowell, holding it down by himself. There's still one player on coming for long, and that could be the problem. Yeah, really good positioning from him. He faces through the Molotov, and he's killing everybody on the A side here. Lowell with four kills looking for the ace, and that, of course, doesn't want to give it up. He is repositioning towards B, but he may not be ready for these angles. Smartly doesn't face all of the ramp, but which way will he go? He's going back towards the A site, so the, the known versus the unknown. Doesn't know where Spiddy is at the moment, but he should realize that he has been around those double doors. Both mouse sports players towards B. Now we can see if uh, Lowell's going to get his ace or if Davkos can uh, bring this back for his team. Lowell indeed gets that fifth kill. All the kills for Lowell. You see uh, Chris J shouting ace next to us as well, making sure we know about it. Hard to miss this one from Lowell. That is a beautiful series of kills to the M4. This fourth kill was really good, especially with the Molotov flying in. See the Molotov frying in there, but uh, he's ready for it. Kebacon taken down, and Daft Cost with 10 HP cannot get the kill. Fast boost from our spots towards that short position, though. Team Spirit are on pistols, so this may be dangerous. Dennis close with the UMP, though, and uh, aggression from our spots. Boost. Oh, oh dear. Nico, though, gets himself too. And it's not looking all that great here for the Team Spirit side. Mouse Sports will lose a couple players, but. It does not matter. It is about to be the last round. It's always got to be satisfying when you uh, AWP the guy standing on Xbox. Because it's so difficult because only his head is showing. It's a very hard shot to, to land there, but Chris J lands on that occasion. Pretty even showing across the board on frags here from Mouse Sports. Uh, we've, a lot of these players have had their moments. Now. Chris J back into that fast long play. He does tend to move around. That's one of the reasons why he's so dangerous on this map. Very comfortable moving all over the place. Default from Spirit. Nico, the info man for Mouse Sports there by middle. Nice little setup here from, uh, from Mouse Sports, actually, the crossfire setup. Chris J on the Deagle. Oh, he has, I mean, he's got the AWP, but. I was wondering if he's just going to continue with the Deagle from that uh, range. But back into the angles as oh, Nico finds himself at kill at range there through middle doors. Good start here. Can it be even better? Nice tag from Chris Jay. Doesn't get the kill though, but a tag will definitely be enough to deter Team Spirit for now. They managed to get out of a sticky situation. I'm talking about mouse sports. Chris Jay there trying to avoid getting shot with the cooldown of the gun running into his teammate, but indeed there's no push from Spirit. They've got some smokes. Look to be potentially setting up for a split towards B, although the Lurker, the would-be Lurker, has gone to join his teammates as well. So it might just be a raw charge through towards B from the middle area. Spiddy having a peek through the window. Falling off the box, though. He's got Dennis for support as well. But they've got a be scared of the tunnel area. Now there is a Lurker towards the tunnel. Dennis and Nico, so far, so good for them. Spiddy taking... Uh, 
Surtis down, leaving Davkost alone. And he will be there, but not for long. 11 to 4, great half from Mouseports. Yeah, that was a real team effort from our sports as well. I mean, we saw great stuff from them across A, across B, you know, some cool plays, you know, aggressions and just, you know, mixing up their setups, able to get aggressive here. We saw a nice round where they had a full eco and one, uh, yeah, full eco, I think it was almost, yeah, actually, it was, yeah, it was a full, full eco, just all USPs, not even a save gun or anything. So, you know, brilliant stuff. Nico and Lowell been putting in uh, good work for their team so far. Nico, there were 14 kills. Lowell not far behind, but the averages are good for the mouse bot side in general. Although, obviously, five of those kills for Lowell just in the one round. But uh, 11 to 4, very strong half from mouse bots. We'll soon be into the second half. Mouse Sports are going to be starting on the, C, the T side now. I mean, again, they had an interesting T, uh, T CT pistol with their utility, so I'm quite curious as to what we might find from them on the T side. Spitty's bought grenades, Lowell's yet to buy. Everybody else has Kevlar. So uh, we have seen a trend towards two grenade men on the T pistol from a number of teams. Maybe that will be the case here as well. On the Team Spirit side, Dima, Davkost, and uh, Sof Zotvik, rather, have bought Kevlar. So we'll see what the other two can do. Yeah, speaking of Nico and Lowell, I mean, there was there were some rounds where Team Spirit had a really, really solid chance to win the rounds. And we saw very, well, well clutches from just awkward spots. And Nico dealing with a split by himself, basically. Uh, yeah, just 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 awesome to see that that mix from Mouse Sports. Because it used to be a team where it would come down to someone, someone going for a massive performance. But in Mouse Sports today, it was all across the board. We, we saw it there on the CT side. What are we going to see on the T side as we start to see them running in towards the initial positions? And already Dima just running up by himself, trying to get a lucky pop. Does get some damage in, but the frag will be Mouse Sports. Three players around these doors for Team Spirit. Davkos in a lower tunnel, but Nico and Lowell are creeping, I think. A noise was made. There's a first headshot. Can he find a second one? Lowell's there. Will he force the issue? Davkos doesn't know what lies in the upper tunnel, but soft tick is coming in there as well. They can't find a frag just yet. Lowell manages to escape, and now he can run distraction. The bomb making its way towards the A site. High flashbang from Spitty that allows his teammate to peek at the same time. Kebaker knows made his way towards the Gandalf position, and now he can hold. It would be crazy for Mouseports to push this angle, and he can just buy time for his team to rotate. There's the rotation. Three players coming up the ramp. This round falling apart for Mouse Sports. Yeah, absolutely falling apart. Lower, there's just nothing he can do from his position, I don't think. Trying his darn to stay with the, the Glock, but it's just not accurate enough. Great aggression, great practice play from Spirits. But with no bomb plant, that would almost always indicate Mouse Sports are force buying here. So let's see if Team Spirit can hold that down, because you never know. But because there was no fragging, really, I don't think uh, Chris J got a frag at least. Yeah, no fragging from Mouse Sports. There's no scout, which is actually a massive deal in this situation. Because if Chris J had a scout, he can suddenly pick all over the place. And it becomes a little bit uh, annoying for t the CT side. But just deagles. That said, Nico has a deagle. And we all know what Nico, Nico can do with a deagle. It's a good round from uh, Spirit. Three kills for Sotvik. Oh my God! <laughs> I can see it happening, but it didn't. It didn't this time. Davkost is in an awkward spot. He's only got a scout, but the numbers game is with Mouseports. The smoke is down, however, so they can charge towards the B site. There are two CTs here, however. Big flash coming in. Loads of people blind, but it's Dima to go down. First one to go down in his sight, and there goes Sotvik. Sotvik as well. This is falling apart for Spirit. Three kills in quick succession for Mouseports. They've got the bomb down as well, and an M4 in the sights. Yeah, UMP on Chris J, as well as a Deagle on Spitty. That is not a good look. Oh, beautiful positioning here from Dennis. See you later, Sirtis. Just get back in left in a one versus two. No health to play with. Trade frag is running amok in the B-bomb sights. And that's Spitty with the frag. Mouseports with a round that they should not have been able to win. In, you know, most of the time, they should not be able to win that round. But this was one of those moments, and Team Spirits, their economy will be racked with problems. Now, if Mouse Sports were the Russian-speaking side, they could have said uh, Bolshaya Pabieda for big victory. Team Spirit off to a good start in the pistol round, but that has soon fallen apart. You see what they're left with. The scout onto Davkost, the odd pistol here and there. 
some smoke grenades. See the long push from Mousebots. Player spotted towards the ramp in Davkos. Davkos in the... Oh, sorry, Certus in the ramp. That makes more sense. So that'd be crazy to uh, have the scouts in there. So long has been lost. Chris J in control of the short position at the same time. Spirit, they're trapped. They are trapped on the site. Scout can cause problems though. But will it cause problems tagging there for Davkos? They're getting closer and closer as every second passes. And now he's dead. So are all of his teammates. 13 to 5. Mousebots close to closing this one down. As Team Spirit will now be... Oh, actually, yeah, of course they, they did uh, invest some money there. So, And they got fully reset. So, yep, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks if your Team Spirit... It really sucks. Dust 2 with pistols on the CT side. Good luck, my friend. Yeah, this is uh, not going to be a great round for Team Spirit, unfortunately. For them, at least. <clears throat> Three people on the A site. I think we have a short boost coming in, so perhaps we'll see some short aggression from Spirit. Chris J is moving in that direction. No fear with the UMP. Patient burst. Nico there for support as well. The rest of the CTs cleared out towards little doors. Sotvik, last one. Dennis will clean him up as well. Brief round. Mousebot only two away from this victory. Smooth sailing. And that's something we all expected. When you play mass sports on Dust 2, you have to be prepared and... Just don't play mass sports on Dust 2. And sometimes it's, it's hard to ever be prepared enough indeed. So, double up here for Team Spirit. If there was a moment to bring themselves back with a round or two, it would be now with this buy. Nico's taken AWP for a spawn pick towards Long. We've seen some uh, proficient flashbangs from the CT side towards Long so far. And there's another one from Team Spirit. Nico realizes there's two players there. Will he continue to peek? He could be grenaded from the uh, ramp area, but he is not afraid to go for the pick. Nothing doing there. And the round continues. That just shows Nico's understanding of how players want to play. Oh, no. Oh, man. Oh, the timing is brutal. But, uh, yeah. Nico knows how players like to play off of each other. That perfect timing with the pick opportunities, but didn't connect this time. But the start is still bad for Team Spirit. How do they recover? That's one way, I guess. Kit back in, chiming in, taking down Nico. Oh, Sotvik has no idea where Dennis is. Almost behind him. Speaking of which, Dima will trade the frag, keeping control of the B-bomb site. Where did the rest of Mousebots go? We've got Certus on the flank now. That's going to keep Mousebots entertained towards middle doors. The multiple man peak comes in, and there he goes. They've still got a minute on the clock, Mousebots. They could go towards either site. Kebekan looking over the smoke. Will he find anything, though? Mousebots being patient. They know what to expect in terms of reaction from these CTs. Kebekan makes a noise. They know one of these two players now is in CT spawn. Out comes Kebekan. Down goes Kebekan. Just Dima left. Last one left. And Speedy's watching the cross. They realize, I'm sure, that it was a B uh, person from B. Speedy turned around, though, and Dima has crossed, so I don't think they have any realization of this. But now the game has been revealed. His gun is called Desolate Space. Will he be a desolate? Will be left desolate here as he goes for the last engagement against Speedy, or last couple engagements. Does get a couple bullets onto Spitty, but Spitty disappears. And this is the real problem. Chris J in pit. And to take Chris J down, because he has deep. Dima has to go spinning around, has no idea. Chris J gets the frag. 15th round. 15th round claimed. And that's going to be a terrible buy now for Team Spirits to work with to try to save themselves. And I was worried for Mouseworks in this round. We had so many kills all over the place. I was worried that they wouldn't collect themselves in that three versus three, say, okay, guys, let's bring ourselves together. Let's, let's go somewhere to do something together. But they did, and they won the round with it. The French guns are out for Team Spirit. Three FAMAS rifles, limited grenades, 10 match points from our sports. I do not expect to repeat of the previous dust two. Our sports much better equipped in this round. Not taking any risks early. Bomb left in T-spawn. Dav cost in the middle area of the scout once again. And uh, that is a lovely shot from Chris J. Again, Orpers can commonly be found um, in that area looking towards a play coming out of Lower Tunnel, which is what Chris J is looking for. And he lands the shot. That's glorious stuff from him. The spray from Dennis Long Range won't be good enough, though, to pick off Dima. 
Kabaki going aggressive in lower dark, doesn't find his mark. And they are dropping like flies. Sort of thick in Sirtis left. Sirtis coming in from long on the push. A is abandoned for the time being. And that is going to allow it to be taken by Mouse Spots. Really taking their time though. Like like the diligent play they're throwing all the nades. Keeping it safe. This is good stuff from Mouse Sports. Smoke down to the extinguish the flames to allow a very, very safe planter of the bomb. Oh, that's a bad plant as far as the CTs are concerned. They will be completely exposed to Long at the very least if they are able to defuse that. But they've got control of Long for the time being. But do they have control of their destinies? We've got a barrel play from Chris J. Will he be spotted? Not in time for Sirtis. Now Sotfik alone versus three with less than half his health. No helmet either. And he will get taken down. No nothing about it. 16 to 5. A very, very dominating scoreline from Mouse Sports. Again, an expected one. If you pick into Mouse Sports with us too, no matter who you are as a team in this world, you can have problems. You can definitely always lose to them. It's so, they're so good on this map, and they showed here today just why, why they're so good. They had a great depth of decision making across all kinds of scenarios. So 16-5 will be the final score. Nice little victory for Mouse Sports. We'll see you after the break with some analysis.